going on, babe? How you doing? Enjoying my jam. That's yours? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's trying to pick that up. You're like half in it. I'm holding it. So How I'm about that? One? Yeah, now you can see me. Yeah, what's going on, guys? On our way to go look at some Q boat to tractors. Right, babe? Sounds kind of gay, but yeah. yeah oh, wait, I can't say that because snowflakes here. Yeah. Kubotas are not gay. Let us know, like, should we get a Kubota? A John Deere? An international? Case international. Okay, they know what I mean. Malachi doesn't let me drive them. Actually, you let me drive them, you just don't let me, like, actually till and stuff with them. That's the fun stuff. <laughs> That's why I do that. But we want to get one. So that way we can obviously manage our properties. Food plots, and bush hogging, clearing areas, hauling out firewood. Right. But I also want one to be able to eventually be able to move like hay bales, especially when I get cattle. We're not doing that. Or, you know, like 50 horses, so. <laughs> Absolutely not. So like we'll everybody see. that I know that has an old Kubota tractor, they're always like, no, they just, I'll just change the oil and put diesel on it and it runs, so. I keep running it, you know. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Be like tractors. Looking at tractors was fun. I got some suggestions from the guy at the Kubota dealership here in Fort Wayne, and he said that for what I said I do, which is some bush hogging, rotisserie tilling, some food plot preparation work small stuff, moving dead trees out of the paths, etc. He said that a Kubota L series tractor would probably be about the frame size of tractor that I would wanna go with. And he said that he would suggest, I thought he said a 2510. I don't know if 2510 is right, but 2510 or 2501, don't quote me on anything. He said that that would probably be plenty for bush hogging trails just basic property maintenance. I'm not doing like any crazy implements or any kind of crazy lifting with it really. All I mostly need is the ability to till and bush hog in a timely manner so I can do stuff on both my properties and not have to go over there and bush hogging and tilling take like the entire day because that would suck. But what do you guys say? Do you think that would be an accurate assumption of what I would need for what I do? Those of you who have seen my outdoors videos and stuff like that, food plot preparation and bush hogging and all that, you know, like what we do at my dad's farm that's pretty much the same type of similar stuff that I would be doing at my properties. Just less farm work and more specifically just deer management and property work. And then occasionally like Reagan using it to move manure and stuff like that. But other than that, you know, pretty basic uses for it for deer management stuff. We got the resto gen back and the resto gen finally has the tint that we were wanting. And what we ended up doing was 15 on the side doors, 15 on the extended cab little windows, 15 on the back and 30 on the windshield, he said that 30 is, is either 30 or 35, I think he said 30, but 30 is the legal limit for windshields apparently, at least in the state of Indiana. For legality purposes in most states, 30 is pretty standard for windshields in terms of being able to be legal. And I think it looks really, really good. You can still see through the cab, but only when you get up close. And then from the back glass, again, you can see into the cab, but it's 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 very difficult. It's not super easy. So I think it's a good mixture of functionality. You know, to keep the sun out of there a little bit, maybe keep it a little bit cooler in the cab, a little bit of privacy, but you know, when you're driving around at night, you're not gonna be like so freaking blacked out in your cab that you literally cannot see anything out of your truck and you have to roll your windows down every single time you're trying to see in your mirrors here. I had a fifth gen limited and a fourth gen longhorn. Both of those had 5% tint all the way around. And it was so cool looking cause like it literally like almost matched to the paint on the truck. It was so dark. In terms of functionality, I was constantly rolling down my windows at night to be able to see in my mirrors. Like you wouldn't believe. And then using my rear view at night wasn't even an option. Like you could not see anything out of the back window. It ended up looking really cool in the daylight, but being super dysfunctional in terms of nighttime vision, it was just very, very bad. We're gonna pick this video back up here either tomorrow when we go and do some property work, because you guys said you wouldn't mind seeing some property work, or when we pick up the Silver 24 valve. Stay tuned. What's going on, guys? So I made a post on Instagram. I said, how many of you would be interested in seeing property work ticking off my neighbors with posted signs every five feet, stuff like that. And you guys were all like, absolutely, we'd love to see that. Anyways, for those of you who have not watched the channels, don't know me, I'm 21 years old. My wife here is 20, we give away trucks. We do YouTube videos, we buy property. It's fun stuff. So I wanted to do a video today talking to you guys about creating a hard edge along the edge of your properties. And this is something that I'm doing for my ground. So we are in a unique situation. 
this fence line, you'll see it right here. This is a property line pretty much right here. Okay. I think technically it's the field edge right behind me, but whatever, it's close enough. The fence was just put here, but we're going based on the fence just to be just to be on the safe side so we don't make our neighbors too mad and hinge cut trees all the way up on the field edge and they're like, oh, that's my field edge and I just haven't pushed it back in several years and whatever. So what we're trying to do, everything on the other side of this fence line is property that you can firearm hunt on. You can use guns and deer seeds and stuff like that. The fence over, which is our ground, it's archery only. It's city limits, ordinance in the state of Ohio. Therefore, we cannot use firearms. We cannot gun hunt. We are only able to archery hunt, you know, compound, recurve, crossbow, all that stuff. What we're trying to do is create an edge that's super thick, super dense, and don't look at this tree as a good example, um, but I wanted to give you an example of what not to do. So when you're hinge cutting, if you are if you hinge a tree and you're cutting them so far through that basically it's making a 90 degree bend in the cambium layer, which is this layer right here, which is what supplies nutrients from the root base up to the rest of the tree. If it, you've got a 90 degree here with a bunch of splintering, you don't wanna do that. You want to do hinges more like this one here, or better yet, this here. Don't cut more than two thirds of the way through the tree and just get yourself a habitat hook. I don't make those, I don't sell those, I'm not promoted by them or sponsored by them anyway, but they make a really good product, habitat hook. Um, it extends out to 14 feet. You can grab these trees way up high, get leverage, cut them down. It's awesome. You want a big, thick cambium layer, and this tree will literally grow like this. There's really no saying. It just kind of depends, too, on how harsh winters are and how harsh the summers are with nutrients and stuff like that. That can have a huge determination on how long your trees live. If all goes well, this tree should live five, ten years growing on its side like this. And with the sunlight coming down, it's going to create tons of this new undergrowth. All these new shoots are going to go crazy, all this stuff. And you'll actually start to grow more vegetation off of the trunk of this tree that'll kind of blossom out and the deer will eat it. It'll create a nice thick edge so that my neighbors can't see into my property and take shots at deer on my side because we like to live in this world where we think our neighbors wouldn't do that. But in reality, there are some neighbors that if they see 160 inch deer browsing on the edge of their property in on yours, they will not hesitate to take the shot and then just play it dumb like, oh, well, it was on my side and it ran into your woods and died. Yes, that can happen, but I'm just saying there are people that will make that story up in reality it was on your property and they know that if you weren't there there's no way you can prove otherwise all we're trying to do is make it so that if you are trying to shoot a deer on our property you have to be in our property to even be able to get shots at them see them whatever so we're trying to create a thick nasty edge of hinge cutting all the way down this property line hopefully it goes as planned we got three four trees down right now we just started a couple minutes ago and the goal like i said is to create more sunlight to get tons of briars and new shoots and just create a hedgerow of just nastiness so that people can't see into our property. And another benefit to this, I can hunt just on the inside of this edge on my side here, up in one of these trees along this edge. And bucks love to make rub lines along the edges. They love to check for does along edges. They love to browse along edges. They like to bed along edges. It's just a really good thing all around. So let's get to it. Come look at this. This is what you want to do. The more you can leave, the better, but if you leave too much, it won't, it won't do anything. But two thirds through, grab it by a branch as high as you can reach. It's always just one more. You get more leverage on it. That'll do it. Oh yeah. That was a big old crack. straight towards that other one that we just did. That one should be pretty easy. Yeah. yeah, look at that. What's that white layer called? I don't know, you said it. You know, I don't really recall. <laughs> <laughs> starts with a C? Starts with an S. Yeah, starts with a C. <laughs> Cam? So, swim, swammy, sl slippy. Slappy, swimming, salmon, salmon, swan, swanson, swanson? Cambium. Cambium. <laughs> See, I was close. You're, you're, I knew it started with an S, though. Samsonite. 
I was way off. I knew it started with an S. Pinch cut line started there. It's kind of a dry spot right here that we gotta, gotta kind of fill in this little gap with a couple trees, but this is what we mostly focused on is this stretch from like here forward. Um, unfortunately, my steel 193 M 193 is running like junk full throttle and it's like bogging and the choke's not on no but it's like bogging as soon as you start to cut anything it just like cuts out and dies so somebody said on youtube that it could be my accelerator pump or some kind of a muffler issue or carb issue i don't know but it's running like junk so we did all these hinge cuts with our battery powered black and decker saw because it ran great all that aside this is what we got done you can see this whole row of trees here we did a bunch of, we did a couple little ones, quite a few um, bigger ones, bigger in terms of like what we generally hinge cut. We usually don't hinge cut our giant trees, um, but trees that aren't really going to be worth any kind of timber value for 10, 20 years. I don't feel bad hinge cutting them. Some of them aren't worth anything anyway. Here's a couple, and then you can see what it does is it creates like this wall of brush and the reason i like the hinge cut so much in the winter is if it's thick and brushy and you can hardly see through it in the winter just imagine how hard it's going to be when this is all green and briary in between here and everything else this is going to be like a wall of brush that not only can the neighbors not see in here when they're using their scopes and rifle season trying to snipe our deer herds out of here which we do have literally deer like reagan don't we have like deer herds compared yeah. to yeah i mean we have a lot of freaking deer in here like groups of 10, 15, 20, 30 deer, like it's crazy. Got this whole wall. And not only that is it a nice barrier for the neighbors, the deer will walk this edge. They'll browse all over this before going out to feed if they're planning on going out to feed. And another thing is too, it makes a nice wall that if we wanna walk on the back side of it to get to our stands that are at the back of the property, when this starts to grow up and get real thick, if we have like an open raked out path on the other side of this wall, if there's deer bedded in on our property here just to the north of us, it's very unlikely if we have a properly made path on the other side of this, just a little trail, it's very unlikely that a bedded deer, as long as the wind's good, is going to be able to identify us moving through the other side of this pile of brush and trees, this tangled mess. So it works really good for that as well. But you can see all the way down through here, it'll look pretty good. So we did all these with this little battery powered, 20 volt battery powered saw. We probably cut what? One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 trees we dropped with that battery powered saw, so pretty cool. We're going to put some posted signs up now. Don't mind me, just keep them too far off my freaking property. Get off my lawn. If you haven't done so yet, head on over to lmpgear.com because you're almost out of time to enter to win this truck plus $5,000 cash. Giveaway ends on February 15th.